so one thing I want to point out is the discrete conservation properties of any final volume scheme. So now we have a working scheme, we want to point out its advantage. And that actually corresponds to your question, which is, can we use finite difference? Yes, we can, but we are losing something important in a conservation scheme. So if we have a, uh, if we have a differential equation in the conservation law form, and we can integrate, when we integrate over any interval, not just a one grid point, let's say A to B, where A and B can be very different, U dx, we know from the conservative form of the equation, this is equal to f of U at A minus f of U at B, right? So this is a natural conservation type of expression because the the sorry I have a DDT here the the time derivative of a total amount of stuff is equal to what's going in minus what's going out <coughs> okay and uh, uh, in a lot of cases the numerical schemes may not satisfy that conservation so I I have uh, I think last year or two years ago I saw an interesting cell phone app called wind tunnel I don't know how many of you have looked at it you, you looked at it anybody else have looked at the like it's a free app uh, iPhone or Android called wind tunnel it it solves the um, it solves the fluid flow equation with on your screen and you can draw any shape on the screen what's interesting is that uh, it looks very real actually but one interesting is that you can draw something like a, a back around the screen and you, you're going to see like some flow is going to go into the bag and never comes out. So things keeps going into this bag that you draw on the screen. You can, you can play with it uh, after a while. So that's a, uh, a very interesting example of a, of a PD solver not satisfying conservation law. Do you mind drawing the bag and see if it conserves <laughs> the, the mass? Okay, so so you have a screen right, and you have flow. I mean, they have visualization of smoke or something. And if you can draw, let's say, you can draw an airfoil with an opening here, and you you're gonna see the smoke goes into the airfoil, and there is no place for it to come out. What I'm trying to say is that finite volume schemes would never create something like that, because if you discretize the equation using a finite volume scheme, you have dui dt equal to uh, f, so I want to multiply delta x on this side, f my, uh, fi minus half minus fi plus half. All right, let me keep writing this, dui plus one dt, is equal to f of i plus half minus f i plus one and half. Now, what's important in final volume is that the way we computed this f i plus half is exactly the way we computed this f i plus half, right? So it's the same number in our in our code. So the f interface is a vector of length n plus one the same f i plus half it's seen is used for computing the derivative of u i and u i plus one okay so that's very important if you violate that is no longer a finite volume scheme the reason this is important is because once you add them together these two cancels so the time derivative of the discrete integral I mean this the if you sum over this this two remember this is a cell average this is also a cell average the summation of these two is actually the total amount of u inside these two grid points it is equal to one flux minus the other flux at these two ends of this interval although the value of this flux involves approximation but the form is still the same so you can keep writing that all the way to f of n, let's say, at the very end, this is equal to f of 
n minus half minus f of n plus half. If you add all of these together, every pair cancels except for the very first one and very last one. Although the form of this flux involves approximation, but the, the fact that the interior flux cancel each other has no problem. So, for example, if you draw, if you, if you constrain, if you have boundary condition saying that the last flux has to be zero at some point, right? That's equivalent of if you draw a bag where the end you, you have no flux. Then it means that if I have flow goes into the first cell, then the time derivative of my total mass inside all this volume has to increase. And in an aerodynamic solver, for example, as the mass increases, the pressure is going to increase and ultimately it's going to push the flow back out of the, 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 uh, the inlet of the, uh, of the bag. Right? So you can't have something that flows into the, uh, a closed volume indefinitely if you use final volume. You want to, if, if conservation, if discrete conservation of mass or momentum or energy is important for you, then it's another motivation to use final volume instead of another way of discretization. And uh, also, uh, we are going to be talking about it a little bit later. Another advantage of final volume is it is a lot easier to deal with non-uniform, non-cartesian complex mesh which is useful for complex geometry using finite volume compared to finite difference. Okay, finite difference is uh, is very easy to use for a Cartesian uniform grid. As the grid gets more and more complex, the complexity of finite difference scheme becomes becomes uh, increases very rapidly. While finite volume scheme, they stay we're going to see, like in 1D uniform mesh, it is not easy to do a finite volume scheme with more than first order. But the same complexity actually carries to 2D, 3D unstructured mesh. So, so your, your complexity won't increase much as you go to very complex geometry. All right. So this is, this is the pros and cons of finite difference versus finite volume if you choose a, a way of discretizing. By the way, there are, there are schemes in finite difference that also have discrete conservation properties, but it's not automatic. You need to be very, you need to work hard to get that kind of to choose your discretization schemes, uh, do a lot of analysis to, to get that. While in finite volume, it's automatic. No matter what kind of flux you use, what kind of approximation you use on the flux, it discreetly conserves what you are conserving.